And here we are, XM Satellite Radio, ready to broadcast to two countries. Man, that was a uh, that was a short one today, right? It was very fast. Oh, you know what happened? Huh. We had production to do over at the other place. Oh, that's why. That's why I didn't, and it was still short. Jiminy Cricket, it just felt short. Today, I short, say. Yeah. I look at the clock, and it's about average. Anyway, We're just tired. I'm hey, not uh, to send anything up. A little program note. Because we're, we're having people show up every day to check out the XM broadcast. We're not going to be here tomorrow. We're yeah. doing the uh, Pat Cooper Rose, so we got a short day tomorrow. We'll be on from uh, 6 to 9 and then uh, taking the rest of the day off. So just keep that in mind. Yep. So you won't be able to check out the XM studio tomorrow. But we'll be open for business uh, on Monday. Monday. Open Monday. for business. Well, it's kind of... like that. Like we're a dr- little family drugstore. I feel like I'm ready for the Pat Cooper Roast. I mean, I got like... A bunch of shit, man. Like six, do you? Six pages. Yeah, I mean, let's hope. Yeah. It's got to be hard. I don't know how you do a uh, roast. It's fun to do, oh. but the problem is, with the Pat Cooper, this is the problem. I know Pat minimally. The other guys on the... I don't really know many of them. Who's uh, Who else is roasting Pat Cooper? Uh, it's weird. Uh, it's myself, Greg Fitzsimmons, who there's not that much on. Well, I know Greg. Gilbert Godfrey is roasting him. Uh, Artie Lang is one of the roasters. Robert Klein is one of the roasters. Stewie Stone, Dick Ooh. Capri, uh, Lisa oh Lampanelli God. will do very well as the host. She'll fucking. Kill. Oh, she's hosting. Yeah, Lisa's really good. So she'll she'll. A lot she'll, of jokes about banging black. Oh, guys. she loves the black cock. She does too. She yeah. really does love she black does. cock. At least she tells the truth about that. Yeah, she yeah. loves a black dick. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of guys, and the guys on the dais. Trump's on the dais. You know, people will poke fun at him. But there's not a lot of people up there. David Dinkins, maybe, or Al Roker. There's some guys up there you could throw jabs at. But it's not like when we roast Voss or Patrice. Or it's all my friends. We're stupid. Colin. Colin's one of the roasters, too. Colin, I'm sure, will be great. He always comes up with really insightful, yeah. funny shit. But uh, there's not many friends of mine up there. There's just Colin and, I guess, you know, Artie Lang. And not but like Trump that. is going to be there? Yeah. But I don't think he's roasting. Uh, but, you know, people comment on his hair. Ugh. And one, I, How many? Do you have a hair joke for Trump? But not. It's not. Uh, it's not the normal one. It's pubic, right? Or ass? Ass hair? No. <laughs> I would. I would just talk about his hair and then uh, make it his pubic hair. Someone's uh, someone suggesting. Why don't you guys uh, broadcast the Pat Cooper roast on two hundred two? First of all, we tried. Did we? Yeah, Logan uh, called and said we should freaking put this on the channel, and of course you should, but it's it's a little more complicated than that, Why? and we couldn't get it done. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I don't there know. There are rights and things. Well, so many and, people. Yeah, there's so many people, uh, yeah. you know, celebrities. Some of the most obvious things you just you just can't do anymore. I, I was thinking about that the other day. We went to a roast on uh, Friday after the show. Oh, my God, that's right. What a complete waste of time. <laughs> You didn't have fun? Now I know why I don't do many of those things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now I know why. Yeah, it was... Because um, you do one every once in a while and go, oh, yeah, this is why I don't do these. Yeah. <laughs> they suck. It was... Um, for, for us, we... I mean, there was nothing for us to do except, like, walk on the red carpet, talk to people knowing they're never going to use anything we say, and then sit there in front of uh, 1,400 people and look stupid. That, that was our job Friday. Our job was to eat in front of people. <laughs> and our job was to bring down the uh, average age of the joint. Yeah, believe oh, it or not. Wow. Just f- fossils. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they roasted Pat Cooper, and, and I got to tell you, Jimmy Jimmy was on the dais. Jimmy performed. Jimmy oh, yeah. killed. I had to go, I, it was in and out. It was very weird. A weird crowd, man. It was stuff, stuff, some stuff I did. I was happy with what I wrote. Like, even stuff that didn't work, I was very happy with. I wasn't mm-hmm. like, I wish I would have done that different. But Colin had great moments, and then some of Colin's stuff died. But it's like, it's weird. Like, I know when I'm watching other guys, I'm not watching if the stuff is like what the crowd is doing. I don't care what the crowd mm-hmm. is doing. That's too big of an audience for a roast. 1,400 people. 1,400 people, and you look around, and you just realize none of these people listen to our, our radio show. None of these people uh, know the younger comedians for the most no. part. And nothing against Jimmy or yeah. anybody else. They're just a very, a much older crowd. They know yeah. the Friars guys. Like, a lot of right, them right. know like, the younger Friars comedians. Uh, it's, it is a weird... Like Lisa Lampanelli hosted, and she did great, she man. Kill Lisa's. A, I don't think she's ever been on our show, no. but she did a great job. Yeah, and, uh, she, was great. she was really happy we we're there, and we 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 told her she did a great job after the thing. She was amazing. She was an animal. Up, I I like the fact that she went up and she did everything she wanted to do. She was completely brutal. 
which to yeah. me is what you should be at a roast. That's what a roast is. One comedian's taking apart another comedian. She was vicious, and it was funny. Yeah, it was just brutal. I mean, uh, uh, it seems they really love that C word. Yeah. God <laughs> the bless friars. Her. But she could take it. It's like that. That. That's apparently. The, the, the well, she could take it. and She could dish it out. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. That apparently, was, she could take it from all the um the uh, black, black jokes that yes. are made. The black guy jokes. We get it. You like black. Yes. Nah. Yeah. We get it. You're <laughs> angry at dad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she was. Uh, she was tremendous. Uh, Jeff Ross was on. Jeff did very well. But yeah. He did a weird singing thing at the end, which he acknowledged was odd. Jeffrey Ross. <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Ross said something that had Ant and I laughing for the, the rest of the roast. And it was just, uh, it was an improv line. It had nothing to do with his set. Remember when that old guy yeah. was trying to find a seat? You got, oh, God. You got to, like, picture this. It's a ballroom, 1,400 people, and there's one really old guy. He had to be close to 90, just wandering around. Ancient. Uh, near his, near the front. suit that doesn't fit anymore because they don't make suits for skeletons. Right. right, and it's all just round table after round table, so he's trying to figure out where he's uh, where he was sitting. He's looking all around, confused. And Jeffrey Ross just started his set, and he just stops his set and looks at the guy and he's like, are, are you lost, sir? Are, are you looking for your golf ball? Okay. You're looking for your golf ball? <laughs> and you obviously had to be there because it was, it was a perfect visual. Oh, yeah. he was just like, where am I? Just, and you've seen those old guys on the golf course just looking wandering like around that. looking for their uh, golf ball. Where's my golf ball? <laughs> Yeah, that was really good. And then he, yeah, he he had a great set. He's he's great at those roasts. Yeah. He could just rip people apart. He knows everybody. And uh, then he decided it would be good a good idea to have an accordion player come out and accompany him to a musical number about uh, the uh, uh, guest of honor, Pat Cooper. Pat Cooper, whose real name is Pasquale. So I think I could be wrong. He sang some song to the tune of "That's Pasquale." Oh yeah, he was yeah. And no yeah. one got it because most people don't know that Pat Cooper's real name is Pasquale. The old, old people know, but right, that's right. about it. And Let's just put it this way. It bombed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which was unfortunate because Jeffrey Ross had a great set up to that point. He a even really, said that. Really, really, yeah, really yeah. good set. He goes, because I had the little video camera in there, so I was taping a couple of people you know, doing some stuff. And he goes, uh, did you get uh, what I did? I go, yeah, yeah, I caught some of that. He goes, good. He goes, I want to see that, you know, right up to the part where I start singing. <laughs> and who was the other female comic that absolutely got not one laugh? Michelle oh, something. And I think she, she did a tough time. She did a 12 to 15 minute set. She didn't get one laugh from 1,400 people. It was so uncomfortable. And Lisa Lampanelli uh, got up there, and what did she say? She said, wow, that really sucked the funny out of me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then she goes, Who's, who says that female comics aren't funny? <laughs> Lisa, I mean, th this woman just destroyed it again for female comics. It was a such a complete bombing. She got up there and every like she got a a polite titter at first, mm. and then as every minute went on and and her her jokes got worse and worse and more unfunny. Uh, people just sat there, kind of mumbling and where was she from? All uncomfortable. I'll tell you what happened. I don't know exactly. She was. Uh, I think she might have been on Last Comic Standing or something. Like something that. like that. She was. Uh, she's been around. I, I think that she was uncomfortable and it would show she wasn't uh, completely prepared as far as coming up and hammering. And Cooper said something we, when he was on the uh, the other side of the show. He goes, "It's not so much just what you say. You have to look and realize what you can't say." Which at a roast, which means what people have stepped on so much. Right. So you're sitting there with your paper. I had eight pages of stuff because, like, literally, scratch off. Yeah. Scratch okay. Off. Can't do that. Yeah. Can't do that. Certain, right. Right. Like, you're, hey, she likes black guys. You can repeat that theme. Yeah. But certain punchlines cannot be repeated. I no. saw all you guys just reworking your material right up to the moment they were calling you. That was really interesting to see. The thing that worked, that worked the best for me was stuff that I actually wrote that morning when I got home in between the time I got picked up. I just yeah. rewrote a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And that is the stuff that worked the best. It's really weird. Because You're right, because I noticed somebody said something and it was the exact punchline. Yeah, you have to watch And it, it was so noticeable. You're just like, oh, okay, I heard that like a right. few minutes ago. <laughs> so, and uh, a couple other highlights. Uh, I mean, it was cute that he took a few shots at us, but is anyone like trying to get Artie some help? Seriously. Oh, my God. It's it's not even funny anymore. Artie Lang looks he looks horrendous. Yeah. And he tried to take a few shots at Ant and I while he was roasting Pat Cooper and the whole room didn't get it. They were like, Yeah, whatever, dude. Why don't you like the you acknowledge Pat Cooper and roast him, not Opie and Anthony? And I'm sitting there like, 
This doesn't bother me. The guy looks like he's going to die any day, and I'm wondering if his like good friends and family are actually helping this guy, or are they going to let him go the way of like Chris Farley at this point? Yeah, he was really bloated and just sweating. I was profusely. amazed how fat he was. Yeah. He did and not in a good way. There are guys that carry their weight. They're fat. They're supposed to be fat guys. He's not supposed to be a fat guy like mm -hmm. that. I couldn't believe how big his, like, his, like, like, his, I don't even, like, his jaw and his neck was all connected. It's like a he, big blubbery thing under his chin that goes down and covers his neck. I whispered Anthony. I'm like, he looks like, he, he looks like a South Park character at this yeah, point. Yeah, he looked like Cartman. He looks like Cartman. As, as Remember when Cartman was fat guy? Oh. They did that whole fat thing. That's not, that, that's nothing. He he's, looks, he's fatter than he that picture. He looks way yeah. worse than that. Yeah. So it was cute, Artie, that you took a few shots at us, but is anyone getting you help? <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he's got that big bullfrog in heat thing going on under his neck. <laughs> it's blown up. He had a funny line about Belzer. He goes, if I want some coke, I'll have Belzer sneeze in my mouth. Yeah. Hey, what's Belzer going on with sniffing Belzer? Belzer. Belzer was high. He was like, every, every punchline, I think it was a timing thing for Belzer, because he would do a line and then go... <sighs> Like, I don't think he was coke. I think that was like sometimes the was guys, he nervous or something up there? Not just like if something. He was snorting in it air. It sounded after every really. Line. It didn't sound like a dry snort though. It was this s snotty kind of sound oh, really? that that went on. Yeah. It sounded like a timing thing. Like uh, like if if something because Bowser was kind of if some stuff worked and other stuff was not working well. And it seems like when something's not working, it's like a timing thing. Like, uh, <clears throat> like you're doing something just to nah. pace out where the laugh should be. Yeah. yeah, you can almost do like a smirk or a, huh. <laughs> yeah, like a, yeah. But it was after every joke, it was so noticeable. Uh, and then uh, uh, someone observed him leaving the roast halfway through or three quarters through and then like stumbling down the stairs. What was yeah. that about? There would seem to be something going on with him. I don't know what's roast. going on with the bells. And then we had to follow like the star of Sergeant Bilko into the room. Through, oh, through the man. Kitchen and Mickey Freeman. Yeah, what? Mickey, Mickey Freeman. Freeman. I... I, I, I <laughs> I oh. try to figure out how old the guy is. Maybe someone out there could help me because I couldn't find his age on the uh, the internet. But Ant and I had to follow him into the big banquet uh, through the kitchen and stuff. We were like zigging and zagging, like like spinal tap to try to get to the stage. Yeah. And we were behind Mickey Freeman. It was a whole line of everybody that was going up on the dais. And I looked at Ant. I'm like, I think this guy might die on the way. Yeah, because the day is. everyone's doing a pretty good clip to get to the stage pretty quickly through this long kitchen, and he couldn't keep up. I was just looking at his shaking blue hand <laughs> sticking out of his <laughs> ill-fitting suit. Well, we all had to sit in the green room, like, you know, uh, in order or whatever. Yeah. And his row left just as he got there, and, and he decided to sit down in the empty row. And then one of the guys, the organizers, was like, Mickey, you're, you're Mickey, you, you, have to, you have to go. You have Mickey, to go. Mickey, and follow them. And then he's just pointing at his seat and his name, like, no, I got to be right here. But it's obvious no, everyone's leaving go, at this What point. are you doing? And then he just starts shuffling, shuffling toward the dais. <laughs> There was literally like a 30 second gap between the guy that was in front of Mickey Freeman. Yeah. Then it was Mickey Freeman, and then it was us and everyone else right behind him. And we couldn't even get around him. <laughs> no. Because it was just, it was too thin and he was weaving. <laughs> I want Poor to, old codger. It made me want to join the Friars Club, though. I'm going to join the Friars Club. Because you got to respect the fact that that's like one of the last places where political correctness is completely ignored. Oh, yeah. Those guys, for real, ignore it. And they are exactly... You know, they kind of embrace <laughs> comedy being what it is, which is at times very brutal. I right. did notice one uh, very, very hypocritical thing. Hold on. Um, what? Al Roker. Oh, yeah. we did talk about this on the way home. Al Roker was there. Uh -huh. Uh, apparently he's a friar, sure. uh, and, and yeah, <laughs> friar Tuck. He uh, he's a friar, and there was like like uh, Jimmy said, no political correctness going on there. So the N words being just thrown around uh, in in joking fashion, uh, you know, whenever appropriate. Uh, with Lisa Lampanelli and Gilbert. her 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 love of uh, black gentlemen, uh, Gilbert Gottfried telling some really funny, the, horribly racist jokes. Is it safe to say the N word was said uh, twenty times during the uh, roast by Pat Cooper alone? Yeah, when he got up and just went off on a Michael Richards tear. All oh, right, right, right. <laughs> He's the only one that made me uncomfortable. Actually, <laughs> yeah, by saying it, it was like, oh Jesus. But I think there are about four or five comedians uh, that that use the N word in their act. Yeah, yeah, easily, absolutely, easily, and the whole room was. You know what was fine with it, 
Michael uh, Spinks was on the dais. He was completely fine with it. They were, they were and, laughing. And Al Roker was completely fine with it. Sure. That's what Anthony's getting at. Jolly Al Roker was just uh, laughing at the jokes. And, uh, excuse me, he was at the forefront of Get Imus Off the Air for uh, saying um, nappy-headed ho. And uh, he was there. He went to the bosses at MSNBC and M NBC and uh, said that he wants him removed because there's no place for that kind of language, blah, 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 blah. Well, obviously, people know Imus does uh, like a, a, a comedy show. Yeah, there's po uh, politicians on it and stuff. But for the most part, when they're just bantering amongst themselves, it's comedy. Uh, that's what he was doing. I see no difference between that kind of joke, especially so, what, something so innocent as what Imus said compared to what Al Roker sat through and listened to uh, in the roast. Well, you know what his argument would be. What? Well, I mean, this believe me, I'm on your side. But it'll be, well, uh, that's over the airways where anybody can hear it. And he was attacking innocent people who didn't ask to be attacked. If you're at the Friars, you you volunteered to be there. and It's a, it's a closed room for adults. Uh, that, that would be his argument. Yeah, and his argument doesn't hold any water because it's it's that type of language has no place anywhere. Ask Al Roker if that kind of language has a place anywhere in public. Ask him on the Today Show. And watch him say, oh, no, no, there's no. Yeah, there's not one incident. There's no instance where that could be funny, where the use of that word can actually make people laugh and be funny. He would say no in a second. So, uh, yeah, hypocritical Al Roker was there. He was getting fat, by the way. What happened? <laughs> what happened? You pop a staple, fat boy? He wanted no part of taking a picture with me either. <laughs> oh, no, huh? Did you try? I got one. Oh, you did? Yeah, and Pat Cooper jumped in, so it was me, Al, and Pat Cooper. Oh, okay. Oh, no, there there were people there. It was like, oh, God. Oof. I don't know how well over my picture of me and Artie Langer gonna go, is going to go over. Did you guys take a picture? <laughs> yeah. I was talking to, uh, who was I talking to? I don't even remember, but um, then Artie was, uh, came over. I walked over to uh, whoever I was talking to. I don't remember who it was. And... Um, some, but a couple of photographers came over. Let me get a picture. Let me get a picture. I'm like, okay. So we're kind of standing kind of next to, but not quite, not like the arm around yeah. each other picture. I was like, all right, kind of smile. And I go, uh, that'll, that'll probably make a website. Is this after or before? Uh, before. I go, yeah, that'll probably make a website. And he said something like, yeah, it'll probably get me fired. <laughs> probably will. <laughs> <laughs> or doesn't give a crap about it. I thought it. that was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Why don't you help the guy that's helping your show? It's obvious he's going to die soon, Howard. Why don't you, uh, he'll just get another why don't guy. Why you try to take care of somebody else besides yourself for once, you loser? He'll just get another guy. It's a Howard, the comic Beef sidekick. Cake. Cake. Is like uh, Darren Stevens. Doesn't matter who it is. You yeah. just throw a new one in. I actually felt bad that I made fun of, uh, and I shouldn't, it's a comedian's roast, that I made fun of Robert Klein, because I love Robert Klein, and he didn't care, but I just... Oh, he was getting hammered, though, too. I felt guilty, like, why would I make fun of a guy who I idolized growing up, but Robert like, what's Klein, a roast? Robert Klein ate it. No, he did okay, he got he some really... He ate it, he Jimmy! Some, he had some very funny moments when he was talking about the guy, he had the wrong ethnicity, I thought it was very funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But Klein is not a great roaster, he was a great comedian, but he's not no. a great roaster. I never liked no. Robert Klein, I gotta really? tell you. Oh, yeah, I like a lot, uh, of, a lot of the older guys. Right? Way back. I never got it to Robert Klein. He did one of, I thought one of the best specials ever was Robert Klein at Yale. Oh, yeah. That was years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I taped it off the TV when I was a little kid, and I used to listen to it. Uh. I, there was, he, was, he was talking about the how, like, the he did very funny commercials jokes, and one was about... Uh, I forget which one. It was about a tire company that was really good. Oh. And it was always made me laugh how like they show like the really bad tire company and then the good one, the guy's dressed in a white coat and he welcomes the customer. Please come in and enjoy the donuts and the prostitutes. It was very funny. <laughs> Robert Klein made me laugh very hard growing up. And I really did a, I just, by the way, did a fat Yenta version of telling somebody else's joke. <laughs> and then the man came in and he goes, hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> There's uh, Lisa Lampanelli ripped him apart pretty good. Did she? Where she? When he was walking away, she said something about him being completely irrelevant. <laughs> it was really, really brutal. Lisa was ri brutal. Yeah. It was fun, yeah. man. That's exactly what a rose should be. She, she really was uh, great. Yeah, she, she, was, she, was, great. she was great. And, and I sat next to Leroy Neiman, the, the famed artist who, yeah. who paints in watercolors. That was pointed yeah. out many, many times up there. And the whole time... 
I I don't think he really knew where he was. He's like 80 because I looked up his age, too. I was just looking up people's ages on the See day. how old they are. I'm like, man, how old are these people? <laughs> yeah, he's really old. And uh, He was sketching people. He right? was sketching the entire time, and I thought that was really interesting. Here's a guy. He's so into you know his his art, which is drawing and painting and stuff, that he can't stop himself. He just had a bunch of scrap papers in his in his suit jacket, mm -hmm. all sorts of different pens, and he was just he was just sketching every person that went yeah. up uh, to the you know to do their act. Yeah, he, he was sketching there. you, Jimmy. I would love to have. And I, that. I wanted to like you know you know try to get that for you, but uh, I don't know. I thought he would bite my arm off. He was sitting two people away from me. I've seen him quite a few times. I guess I, I know the stuff he does. Very famous uh, sports painter. That's a fun place that fires me. I, I really want to join it now after going. Yeah, on. yeah, man, those guys are old school. They don't, uh, they don't, they don't crap it's around with literally the light. Old, yeah. old school, one room schoolhouse <laughs> school. Those just, guys are just ancient. To allow the N word to fly around like that, and like, hey, that's what happens here. Like yeah. it or don't. Whatever you use in your personal life, it seems they're old enough where. <laughs> yeah, there you probably go. throw that around. Pat Cooper had a good time though. He was very gracious, and it was it was nice to see Pat getting a tribute. Pat, we 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 were talking about Pat Cooper and how sincere he gets with some stuff that's just ridiculous about nonsense. And he'll scream about nothing, and then all of a sudden he'll get like you know he'll get like really emotional. My father, mouth to God, the man, mouth 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 to God, mouth to God. God, the man was a saint. He would use the bathroom. He wouldn't leave until everything had dissipated. God bless him. Not a. Wouldn't leave a cent in the air. He was not a cent. Respected people, mount to God. And then five minutes later, I left when I was fourteen because my father punched me in the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call the cops to my father. What are you talking about? <laughs> my mother would hit me with wooden spoons. Mount to God, the woman was a saint. <laughs> she could make a sauce. What I wanted to do at the roast, I didn't have time, was actually take audio of him when he was on, on the show last week on, on XM and actually like just read verbatim certain things he said because he is completely out of his mind. <laughs> like the things he gets mad at. It's like, what do you... He's like, they want me to go to California. What, you're up for six, 12 minutes? F you. F California. It's like, why like, are you mad at California? He's, he's saying F the state of California. California. Cause you want, That's some anger. Yeah, it's like, and somebody invited you there, so F them and then F the state? What's the matter with you? <laughs> He's insane. Uh, let's say hi to Tony in Pennsylvania. Tony, what's up? Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, man. Hey, um, just a quick question. You said Artie was taking a couple shots at you guys. Um, was he doing it in good nature or was he being a dick? It was. I, he was taking the shots at us. I mean, it's a roast, so it's, it's, a roast. it's, it's, it's hard to say, but he, I mean, he... He was doing a lot of inside stuff because he knew we were up there, basically saying that uh, we we don't have the same ratings as David Lee Roth, which is a flat out lie. Uh, ah, whatever. Uh, as a comic, I can only say it, it, to me it wasn't. It was if it was going to be brutal, it would have been brutal. And to me, it wasn't like it was just just shots, but nothing horrible. I, yeah, I didn't walk away going, oh, well, that mother f. No, you know, no, I was no. more concerned about uh, as far as uh, a human being goes to another human being. I'm like, wow, is anyone getting this guy help? <laughs> I teased Artie. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how? You know, he he's really helped uh, Howard show, and I'm wondering, Howard, are you going to wake that up and uh, like take care of someone else besides yourself and your stupid ego and get this guy some help before he drops dead like Chris Farley? That's a guy in need of an intervention. Yeah, absolutely. So it was kind of hard to like sit there and take what he was saying seriously because I'm thinking, wow, this guy is in in a really bad place. Because mm -hmm. I haven't well, said, well, we ran into him. Uh, I don't even know, like over a year ago on the street, ago. and and he was very nice to me face to face. That's why I laugh at this crap because then he has to go on Howard's show and kiss his ass. <laughs> and uh, since that time, and and you know the Pat C Cooper roast, it's unbelievable. It's the same effing guy. Yeah. It's really Amazing. unbelievable. Amazing. Another but another person that's just brave on Howard's show, but when Oof. it comes to you know in person, is the biggest puss out there is uh, Boy Gary. Oh yeah, yeah. I was hanging with uh, Colin Quinn, and I it, it was like a circle of us just kind of talking and laughing, and I I feel someone coming into the circle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's Boy Gary to say hi to Colin Quinn, but he doesn't know I'm there. And I turn to see Boy Gary. He recognizes that it's me. Went holy ass. Got really uncomfortable and uh, no joke. And I swear to God, I'll probably you know make believe he punched me in the face on Howard's show, knowing how they lie over there. He ran like a little girl to the other side of the room, like a little little bitch. Wouldn't even come over. 
No, he came like over. That. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't even like. As soon as he realized it was me, because I had my my back turned to him, and I I was just yeah. happening to turn around because I was you know checking out the room, whatever. He saw me. He he hightailed it to the other side of the room as fast as he could. He could mumble something on his breath, like oh 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 my god, like oh, in a major panic. <laughs> he was shocked. In a major panic. <laughs> Oh. All right, we got to take oh, a break. Jesus. Uncle Junior yeah. was there. That's a picture from the roast. There you go. Of Artie and Uncle Junior. And Artie, look at under his neck. That is not even human anymore. Dude, all wow. radio crap aside, I'm, I'm being dead serious. I mean, I, I, who's getting this guy help? Who's getting this guy help at this point? <sighs> wow. Is his family stepping in? Are they saying something? Are his uh, friends saying something? Is it not us? Uh, the is it anyone's place to say something? Like, how does that work? Really, I don't know. Oh man, it's when you see when you see anybody like a friend or whatever. It's difficult because like there's a line between like, all right, I want to help somebody because I, I like, I care about somebody, and it's like then you're like, I don't like to be in people's business. That's a tough one, man. That's why I'm that's asking. Like, one. how does that work? Yeah, you, you gotta just leave it up to the family. Some, well, even the family. I mean, there's there's programs for people to go to who live with alcoholics just because you can't like make people who are who are partying too much stop. They say, like, you shouldn't be, like, on them every 10 seconds. Like, don't do that, don't do that. You should almost be like, yeah, go ahead. Let them do it unencumbered because the faster any individual hits bottom, the faster they tend to want to do something. It's like he's storing food in his neck. The neck's That's just what it looks like. Like a pelican. It's bizarre. It's amazing, the difference. I mean, I haven't seen him in over a year. Easily. It's like, wow. Now, it must be hard to shave. Let's take longer to shave. There's a lot more real estate to shave on a big fat neck like that. All right, we got to take a break. We got a thousand dollars to give away uh, between pretty much between now and seven thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, well, right after the break, the contest will officially be uh, be on. Okay, when you hear that sound, we've been playing. Well, we played once this morning, even to help you guys out. If you're the yeah. tenth caller, you're going to win a thousand dollars. Stay there. It's Opie and Anthony. Checking out the Opie and Anthony show. Colin, Colin got quoted the paper, uh, the post for the roast. He had a very funny line about how old everybody was. He said, "That's not a who's who; it's a who's left." Yeah. <laughs> because uh, the last woman most of these people were inside of was Beth Israel, <laughs> 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 which is a hospital, by the way, just to help everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, because I, 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 I told that same line to somebody over the weekend. I'm like, I don't get it. Who's Beth Israel? Oh, like, oh, God. Oh, boy. It's a hospital. That's why that's really funny. I like the other one, too. Joey Bishop was supposed to be here, but he took the easy way out. Yeah. <laughs> Colin just was, his head was down. I was looking at the monitor. Yeah. <laughs> the stupid top of his head. It was like a, it was like a Google Earth shot of his head. <laughs> that idiot, his face in the paper. But he, yeah, he well, really you know. Funny. Yeah. Ah, you know, he made yeah. fun of Rita Crosby's book. He's like, ah, it's not exactly all the president's men, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and she's uh, she's much better looking in person, by the way. Got to give her props. Yeah, yeah. I you have saw Rita Crosby backstage. Props. She's not a bad looking woman when you see her face to face, you know, on TV. I don't know what the TV's doing to her. She's yeah. not on MSNBC anymore, but. Yeah, she did look better uh, live than on TV, that's for sure. And uh, it was just very refreshing to be there. I mean, that's what comedy is supposed to be, what we saw. Yep. Simple as that. Just pure, no political correctness, no mm -hmm. do-gooders, no lawyers, none of that crap. Absolutely. A lot of C words. Not, not, not one of the, those guys worried about offending anyone. Not, not a one. And I know there's a, there's a difference between that and radio to a certain extent. Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, the broadcast thing is, is one thing. It's oh, all right. It's going over the air. But there is an argument that some of this material isn't appropriate any time or anywhere. And that's what a lot of these people's arguments are. And uh, you know, if there's one place it belongs, it's in a, a room like that with a bunch of people that understand what they're getting into. And nobody should be able to come in there and you know start saying, ah, you can't say this or that. The only thing I don't like about the Friars Club is this is why I haven't joined. Is when you go there, you gotta wear like a, they're like old school. You wear a suit jacket when you eat. I don't want to wear gotta, a suit jacket. That is respect. I don't like suit jackets. The suit jacket. My father would wear a suit. I don't you hate that. <laughs> my, he, my father would wear a suit in a tub. 
<laughs> <Bloody. laughs> um, Should have worn an anchor in the lake. <laughs> <Dope>. <laughs> my father. My father. Nothing but great memories, but then you realize the memories ended at 14. <laughs> yeah. The and great ones anyway. Punching oh, you. <laughs> right. <laughs> punching you in the head. Uh, I, I could have him on every day. That guy is really entertaining. Oh. He's a contradiction, that uh, Pat Cooper. He's a little he's a little much to to deal with um uh, over the long haul. Like we, when we walked over from uh here over to uh, satellite over to XM uh I right when I got to the studio he was already there. Yeah. Sitting in the chair in the studio. And I kind of like getting in there and uh setting stuff up, kind of taking a a little breather before the show and it was just Pat would talk to you and just blah, 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 and there's there was no time to do anything, so I'm just sitting there like, ha, ha, Pat's yelling. I have to acknowledge his yelling. Give me no downtime. Mm -hmm. All right.